In this tutorial, we're looking at Wellman profiles as well as Wellman corner treatments. Um, this I'm going to use on a section of already installed Wellmans that comes with SolidWorks 2022. If you like and are getting value from this content, please consider subscribing to get into it. As usual, we're starting off with a new part in SolidWorks 2022. Part open. So our unit is millimeters and we'll start off with the top plane. So top plane, normal to sketch. So we're just doing a very simple um, angle on weldments just for the basic principles. And then in the next tutorial, we'll do a bit more um, in depth. So we are drawing a line from our center point and we are making those lines 250 millimeters. So 250, click, shift, click the line, shift, click the opposite line, equals. Okay, so now we have a fully defined black sketch with a 250 mil line and a 250 mil line. Close the sketch. Everything is easy enough. It's on the top plane, press the space bar, isometric, and we can see our two lines. Nothing complicated. Up along here, we have our different um, tabs. So we've been using our sheet metal tab, our sketch tab, our feature tab is there, and we have add-ins and cam and cam TDM, TBM. So if we go to the blank on the top of our screen, right click where it says tabs, scroll down, and you can come down along and we're looking for a Wellman's toolbar. So you can see it just there. When you tick the box comes on, and uh, Wellmints pops up over here. Now we have our Wellmint. So we have a 3D sketch, a Wellmint symbol feature, structural member, which is our actual um, steel section. We have a grayed out trim extend command, which we'll be going through later. We have an extrude boss command. We have end cap, gusset, and weld bead, which are grayed out. And we have extruded cut, hole wizard, chamfer, which is graded out. And then we have our reference geometry. So we have already drawn a 2D sketch on the top plane. So we will go with a structural member. Click our structural mem member and it'll bring us up this information box. So we want a standard. So we're going with ISO. You can also go uh, ANSI inch, but we'll use an ISO standard. So in a future tutorial, we'll be doing um, custom standards, custom profiles, and we will do custom um, sections. So under our type, we've angle iron, C angle, C channel, pipe, rectangle tube, SB beam, square tube, and I have a custom already here, which is square tube too. So we will say we will go with pipe. Now, as you can see, there's only three sizes of pipe. You can set up these, and I'll show in a future tutorial of templates, and you can put in the exact pipe sizes, or sometimes you might have to make a custom pipe or put in the custom pipe measurement for your standard stock. But we'll say 33.7 by four. So we select that. Transfer material from profile. So if you had a material based on your profile, it would transfer through. We also have a groups box and a new group. So we click new group. Once we click new group, come to one line, click. And you can see this is the outline of our profile. It's a good, strong, thick shed pipe. And then we'll travel through with that line. That opens another um, section of options but on the same group our path segment line 2 select the opposite line now we have one on the opposite side and as you can see we have a mitered joint so the first thing we'll do is we'll apply corner treatment so if we untick that it would keep our two pipes as a separate unit so one pipe two pipe the overlap and SolidWorks doesn't see that the need to merge somehow. So we have to apply corner treatment. Sorry, just to say that if you took off corner treatment, you might apply a gap instead. It can be handy for some things. So we have our mitre joint. We have a butt joint, which is end butt one and end butt two. So one pipe extends over the other pipe. So say a handrail joint, something along those lines. And it doesn't even cut through the opposite pipe. Then the other version of that is at the other side. So we can have a flat where one pipe just meets the other pipe, 
or we can have an overlap which allows the pipe to overlap all depends how strong and uh, what condition you want your pipe ends in on there are overlap are our corner treatment areas so we can take off to not allow the pipe to cross to allow it to run flat and then we can also set um, gaps and distances for different types so we want a mitre so when we go with a mitre joint each pipe if it's a 90 degree is cut at 45 degrees so this is a mitre joint with no well gap so for a well gap we come uh, merge mitre trim bodies which would make that as in one pipe if we take off that we add a well gap of one mil take off now we can see that when these pipes line up you have a welder's gap of one mil to fill now we can also mirror profile uh, do lots of different adjustments we will show it's easier to show with a square box but we'll try with this one anyway we'll say locate profile locate profile is extremely handy if you draw on a surface and you just need to drop the bottom of the profile on the surface or if you need the profile in the center of the line etc so if we say and click on locate profile you'll see you have an orange point an orange point an orange point and an orange point so if we want our line to sit on the base of this profile get the orange point on the profile click now our line is sitting on the base of those profiles Likewise, if you want it in the middle, click again. Middle. All right, for the final of the demonstration, if you want left or right, click left or right. As you can see, it sits on the inside. So just for handiness sake, we'll set it back to the center. On the custom profiles, we can also put in those center marks and those points, and you can drive your sketch for your custom profile um, location on points that you pre-select if we click OK we have our mitre joint on our material as usual plain carbon and we have our joint on our cutting list shows our pipe size and then our two pipe sections technically a weldment is an assembly of different parts within the one SOLIDWORKS part and not an assembly. It's uh, difficult, but when you go to make your cutting and your bomb lists, everything will be clearer. We look at our end caps. So end cap is a cap and plate on the back of a pipe. You can click. So I just click the end cap, it comes up, parameters face, you want to click this face. If you're just going to cap off the pipe for a handrail purpose, uh, you can set your thickness of your cap back down you want it on the outside which is this one and radius weld the whole way around the job complete then we have different options so if you wanted to machine off the cap and set it on the inside so it sits semi into the the full uh, cap or you want to make the cap snug and fill weld that side Say if we go back to the, the semi, now we have one material clashing with the other. So you can make an offset value on this one of five mil and you have your inner cap. If we say the outside here, our cap is sitting on the outside. We want a thickness ratio of 0 0.1. Now you could just base fill that, which would make the cap the same size or our offset value. So if you want to offset your cap size by one mil, and now we have an offset value. And we click OK. So now you could weld the cap around just to finish it off. And if you wanted to show something like a simple chamfer, drop in your chamfer. The 10 will be a bit, bit large, say one. And that would allow you then to weld around your cap and clean it off. But of course, you'll have a step on the cap so the end cap you might put in a value of zero bring it out to its full and then weld that way around so there is our end cap on our weldment 
it's a very easy weldment. We just put the name cap on the other side. Uh, click. That was a very simple tutorial on just showing what a weldment is and how to do a very, very basic weldment. The next tutorial will be more complex weldment and we can see end conditions and corner conditions much more clearly. I thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you get value. Till the next one.